Hello everyone, this is Andrew T. once again coming at you, and this time we're doing a di different vlog from my last video of the day, because last night I watched Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and I had heard so much about this, and there was my half my YouTube channels I subscribed to had reviews on it from people I admire and, uh, you know, opinions I respect, like Angry Joe, you know, Kevin Smith, you know, a couple others as well. They were all talking about it, and it came out. It's been out for about a week now, I believe. So I went and saw it on Saturday at a midnight showing, just because I felt, you know what, money's tight, but I want I wanted to see this uh, this video this movie in 3D in the theater because I really enjoyed the first one. I'm really glad I saw it in the theater as well. So I want let me go see this one. And oh my gosh, it was so good. It was a very very good movie. Very emotional too. I did not expect to hear to talk about heartstrings as much as it did. Um, first time in a long time I've had I've laughed at multiple scenes in a movie, and and they've helped that. I had, there were other people there that found the, the content funny as well. That are sitting next next to me and that were you know into the 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 movie as well. So it kind of helped that I had that group mentality. But uh, let me explain why I liked it. And this is going to be spoiler free. So there will be no spoilers at all. Uh, I will not describe any of the scenes over just generalities, so you don't have to worry about anything. Can't spoil it. Go out and see it. <laughs> um, so the film has all the the characters that you know and love already in there. You know they have you know all the Guardians of the Galaxy. They also have they bring back the Ravagers. You know, James Gunn's brother is is spot on as well, and as his uh, first mate. They have uh, Michael Rooker come back as Yondu, who just kills it. He just kills it, and you can't help but like him. <laughs> He's just a, a a character that you just can't help smiling at, no matter what comes out of his mouth. The performances are all spot on, even with the newer characters that they add, like um, Ru um, Kurt Russell's uh, Ego, and then uh, the new character that's uh, associated with Ego Mantis. She does. She does her role very well too. She's very similar to Drax in that um, Drax doesn't really know about metaphors or things like that. You know, he's very literal, and she's very innocent in that she doesn't really have anyone but ego uh, to to talk to her entire life. So she doesn't know any social norms at all, and they kind of they kind of uh, get along. But she does it in a way that's not just Drax version 2.0. Uh, the the sovereign species, you know, the gold uh, ones that are in the ships that are firing them and on the previews, they're a new new uh, addition as well, and their leader does a good job with her role. Um, gosh, who else? Uh, I think that's about it for this one. There's not there's not a ton more. They, the the Nova Corps is not in there. They're mentioned. Uh, the Kree, they're they're not in it as well, but they are mentioned. Um, you got your Stan Lee cameo, uh, just like every other Mar Marvel movie, and it's a good one, uh, just like all the, all the others. Oh, uh, man, anything else? For, I can't think of any other actors. Oh, yeah, uh, Nebula. Nebula is back in this one as well, and she, she get, all the characters really get fleshed out a little bit more in this one, especially the minor characters that you, you saw in the last one. Yondu gets a fleshed out storyline. Um... Nebula gets a fleshed out storyline. You get to learn more of the backstory of Gamora, Peter Quill, you know. Everyone but Groot, basically. Because <laughs> baby Groot's just too adorable. And even Yondu gets, you know, so his backstory fleshed out a little bit. Because, uh, you know, the whole story's about Peter and... There's, there's no spoiler here. You know, everyone knows now that... Okay. I say that, but I stop myself. Everyone may not know that. So... The main story is going to be centered around, you know, uh, Chris Pratt's character, Peter Quill, again. So you're obviously going to have Yondu stuff in there because it's centered around Peter. Yondu brought him up, so they're going to have stuff intertwining there. But the pacing of the movie is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. They start on one area for some backstory. They go right into the Guardians doing something. The intro alone is so fun. I didn't want it to end. It was so much fun just to watch the intro of the of the Guardians, you know, uh, doing their thing. Uh, it was just great. And the way 
the movie goes after a while, you know, people get split up, um, so they follow different storylines uh, for all these characters I mentioned in different ways, but the pacing is so well done that you never just like, oh, uh, 45 minutes later, oh, where'd that character come from? I forgot all about them. Like, no, they're still in the forefront of your mind by the time they come back in the screen, so you're like, oh, crap, you know, here comes so-and-so, or, oh, yeah, that's right, so-and-so is doing this and doing that, and this is where we left them off last time. So you're just going from one thing to the next to the next, and it's a thrill ride the entire way. And there's so few movies that do the pacing that well, and that's another thing. The writing is spot on, the acting is spot on, and the humor is mile a minute. Like, there's hardly... Most movies that want to be a have comedic elements to it usually try one or two things they either want to write all the jokes and like okay these are going to be the funny parts and you know this is how the movie's going to be structured no room for improv or they try to throw a million jokes at you and whatever hits hits and sometimes they don't but it's like oh this is a comedy haha <laughs> comedy you know it gotta be funny every every you know three minutes we gotta throw in a joke in there this this movie is funny and the jokes are there but the visual stuff, the the way the actors portray their characters on, on the situations that make it funny, it makes it so that it doesn't feel like it's trying to be funny, but it's cracking you up almost every second of the movie anyway, because almost nothing misses. I can't remember one thing that did miss. That's how that's how many of them hit, and they did throw a lot of a lot of jokes in there, but it wasn't like. It wasn't forced. Nothing was forced in this movie. And then, uh, I got emotional in this. This was, this guy, I teared up a little bit. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to say some of the, the, the themes in it, you know, were pretty deep and the characters that, the interactions they had were pretty intense uh, near the last half of the movie. So I was r really impressed the way that it tugged at your heartstrings um, with, the interactions in the movie, but also that I could still have a good time and uh, feel good walking out of it at the end. So, like I said, this is spoiler free, not giving anything away, not describing any scene, anything like that, but just a generalities for, if you like the first one, you're going to love this one. It's definitely worth every penny. See it in 3D if you can. The opening shot in 3D, I was lucky because the previews weren't working in 3D. And we had like 20 people get out and say, fix this before the movie starts. So 10 minutes later, right as the movie starts, it blacks out and comes up and the 3D's working. Just in time for the first scene, which is eye-popping 3D. Uh, for that very first scene they have in the movie, and it is definitely worth it. So I have a 3D TV over there. I'm getting this on 3D whenever it comes out. The only Marvel movie I haven't picked up are Ant-Man and Doctor Strange. Ant Man because I saw it on a plane ride when I went to Japan, and I could basically, you know, I saw it. I'm glad I did, but I could basically leave it for. I don't want to see any extras or special features in that one. Really wasn't interested. Um, it was great in some war, but getting off on a little tangent here. But uh, Doctor Strange, I, I may pick that up later when I have some extra cash around. But it wasn't a just go out and buy as soon as it got to Blu-ray 3D. So this one though. As soon as it comes out, this is one of the ones I would definitely buy on Blu-ray 3D first day. It's that good. I want to know all the commentary. I want to know all the special scenes, the bloopers. Five different ending credit scenes. And that, that was leaked before, so that's not a spoiler. But they're all worth it, and they're all good. So that uh, video is coming up in about 10 minutes here. So that is my review of Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 2. Go see it. I'm not going to score it, but it's my favorite movie this year so far. Anyway, once again, this has been Andrew T. Kaminachi, and thank you all so much for watching, and you all have a good one.